Okay, tonight's project is to investigate a gas tank implosion problem. Uh, I suspect that that's what I have going on here. I don't see obvious uh, symptoms right now, but here's the evidence. So there's the, uh, this is the passenger side of the tank. And you can see right in here where this area has been sucked up. And you can see the gap between the, the, the hanger strap. See if I can move the camera, get a little better view over here. I'm not even sure what you're seeing. Okay. So I don't have the recent, uh, recently anyway, I don't have the problem that others are noticing that they can't get the gas to go in in one shot. Um, in my case, that doesn't happen, but I can remember a few years ago having that problem, but I can also remember that I had some huge thumping and rock the car kind of thumping and noise and never understanding what that was then. Let's so move over here, a little different shot. Here's a nice shot to see how that sunk up in there. The other piece of evidence that I look for in this case is to see if there are any type of um, impact marks any kind of abrasion, scrapes, dents. There's nothing here that makes it look like it was done externally. So this has to be a vacuum type of problem with a bad vent. So the solution to this is to um, replace the vent with a with a actually a revised vent that BMW has come up with uh, some years ago, and then also to replace the charcoal canister because it gets uh, saturated when the vent becomes bad and gas gets into the charcoal filter. Um, I'm also concerned about this here. I don't know if it's anything. It looks like an a, a area here of discoloration from leaking or something. You can see all around. Like if, if I pull way back, you can see that it's all around the inlet hose. If we look up at the inlet hose here, I don't really see any obvious signs of leaking, but I, have, I do have this hose on order to replace it. So I have a new hose here and clamp. But the main part of this project for tonight is to replace the, um, the charcoal canister. I wonder if um, a shop can apply pressure, since these are soft indentations, I wonder if a shop could apply a pressure to that and, and push this back out. But look at that, this strap isn't even secure because of that indentation. Let's take a look at the driver's side. Uh, as I've looked at this before, I've not seen any sign over here, but I, I do see that, that white staining mark, so perhaps that's not a fuel leak issue. Maybe it is. My fuel uh, economy is really bad um, right now, at about 13 miles a gallon, so I'm going to be looking for leaks and different things. A lot of different things I'm doing. Yeah. But I don't see any sign of that. Well, here, a little bit, if you can see a little bit of a indentation right in this area here. Okay. Okay, let's now go out and take a look at what we're gonna, how we're gonna deal with this particular issue. Okay, and here's the uh, primary components to deal with that uh, uh, gas tank implosion problem. So we have uh, here on the right the canister, the charcoal canister, and then here um, this is the uh, upgrade for the replacement uh, vent tube, and here is the instructions from BMW, the TIS for um, the procedure. Get that done. It's impossible to really just look at these components on the car to determine if they are bad you end up with symptoms. Well, here's where it is. So I still have this apart for the strut work and suspension work, but I like a little extraction move on temporarily to something else. <laughs> so what we have to do first is take this liner off so that we can get at these components that are in here. And we'll do that next and then I'll, uh, I'll show that part of the process.
Okay, so giving this a look, it looks like the liner has uh, a few different fasteners. So I actually have one here missing. So I don't know if this is a like this, a press fitting here. This is just a push pin type. And then here is a screw that's uh, a uh, eight millimeter head and then you can see here Jeez. here is a ten millimeter fastener and over here is another 10 millimeter fastener. So that's, and, uh, and then also where the ABS sensor housing here, this will also pop out right here, these little things, these two connectors or fasteners. I think they'll pop out. We'll take a look. So interestingly, this press pin fastener I find I can remove easily with the claw of a hammer. So I wedged it underneath the pin and then you can pull it out like so. And then once it's uh, the pin is pulled out it releases the fastener from behind and then it just pulls out. I think that that's probably what I'm missing down here, yeah. So I'll just order a couple of these to replace these. Okay, I'll go back onto the other fasteners and uh, wait to show you something of interest. Okay, I finally got the, uh, the wheel liner, wheel well liner off and this is the housing that the ABS sensor goes in. The, the, the connection is in here. And then this, this whole assembly is here. Like so, and, the, and then the, the wheel liner would be all up and through here. And then this is, serves as a, as a fastener also to the wheel liner. So this will pop in here holding the wheel liner in place and then there is a little fastener that presses into the center like so and that presses in and that presses in it expands that connector, that fastener, anchoring this housing to this frame piece which helps to hold in the uh, wheel well liner. This is a bear to get off because I didn't know how to get it off and then when I did find I figured it out it took kind of a reefing on it. I might have to replace a part there. Alright now let's take a look. Here is the part we're looking for. So we have the charcoal canister here. This will be replaced. And then the purge line. And then this unit here has to come off to get access to some of these hoses. So I'm going to again follow the BMW TIS for the specific instructions. So I'll get back at that. Okay. So I've disconnected the purge line. This is the original purge line here. It ran across the top of this canister here, which is I think called an evaporator tank, expansion tank it's called. So it ran across there. It ran out of the top of the old charcoal canister and across the top of this expansion tank which would 
sit up in the top of the wheel well. So the TIS instructs to disconnect it and then you can see where it goes down into the frame. So it says to pull it out. So I'll pull it out. That's in there pretty good. I'll tell you before I turned on the camera, I had to yank on it really hard. Okay, so this is the original That's the original vent line from the factory. So the old story was that this would get clogged up with something or other. A lot of times you'd read about spider. Let's see. So I just blew through it effortlessly. There no, there's no restriction. There was some dust in it. Okay, so let's uh, get back to the TIS, and it's going to uh, probably instruct how to take this apart next and put the new stuff back together. So here's the new vent tube. It's a lot shorter than the other one. The other one ran way up into the frame. But the other one is open-ended. So it's just an open hole. Now, even though in my case I was able to blow through it, uh, the theory is that uh, something gets in there, often suggested spiders, but uh, whatever gets in there will cause the vent to no longer function. If the vent line doesn't work, then gas will saturate the charcoal canister. The replacement has an open-ended but it's kind of got a guard on it. So this guard is uh, to prevent something from getting in there. And this piece will just come out of the center port of the canister. Like so. And then it'll run across the top of that ex plastic expansion top uh, tank, expansion tank that's in the top of the wheel well. Okay. So I have to disconnect and remove still the original charcoal canister. So I'm going to get back to that. And here we have that here. So this is definitely original. Uh, best I know. Okay. So these connectors have little squeeze tabs here. So if you squeeze these, then you should be able to pull this off. So let me go ahead and try to do that. I'm going to set the camera down. Okay, simple enough. That pulled off just like I guessed. And looking at the new one, I have to reuse this. So I have to be careful with this. And so that I don't get these switched, I'm going to go ahead and plug these into the new canister one by one. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to shut down the camera and go ahead and uh, do a little of this work. Okay, so uh, here's a part to uh, show you that uh, not to overlook. So when I went to put the uh, purge or the uh, vent, the vent tube on, it's very loose on the canister. So this is the original again that I removed. So if you look close, there's a little insert. Let's pull that out, you see, pull it out of there. Oops. So it's a little rubber sleeve. So then we take this to the new one. Slide that rubber sleeve on right there. And then purge tube then. I've already routed it along the top of that expansion tank. It's just got to be preed up a little bit. And the, uh, the back end of it snaps in to a little snap there where the original was. And you hear <clears throat> by the end of that, you see that little guard to prevent something from getting in the end of that vent tube. And down to the canister, reconnected. Everything's reconnected. <clears throat> So there's where it came from. <coughs> this is the uh, ABS wiring harness. It goes in here. I'll give that a quick look to make sure everything looks okay there. And I'll mount the charcoal canister back into place. I'll brush out this dirt. And I'll brush the rest of the dirt off of this these parts off the expansion tank and the charcoal canister. Just give it a good looking over, but it looks like this is it. Okay, let me start bolting it back together. <clears throat> 